Hi, I'm Andrew Szymanski and I am the producer and project lead on Lost Planet 3 for Capcom. Uh, today we're showing off a new hands-on for the single player as well as the multiplayer. Well, that doesn't look good. Best to follow the trail. Coronas, this is Peyton. Do you still read me? Hayden, Corona's actual copy of the plan of LaRoche. Well, I found his rig, Beckett. Let's see, White Canyon Junction? Looks pretty beat up. There's no trace of the man himself. Thanks for the update. Just keep looking. I know he's out there somewhere. Radic out. Uh, the single player that we have today is uh, about the first 50 minutes or so of the game. Uh, it's literally the point at which the player will take control uh, of Jim as he arrives on the planet. Uh, and then he goes through his first uh, assignment, uh, accomplishes that, and then come back, uh, comes back to base. Well, it starts after a brief uh, opening cutscene, which I won't mention because of spoilers. Um, Jim finds himself on the planet, and he's actually crash landed uh, on the planet. So he has to first find the transponder uh, that uh, the rescue party is going to need to find his location. Uh, and over the course of trying to find that transponder, he runs into a bunch of acrid creatures. And very typical Lost Planet, uh, he didn't really know what he was getting himself into, and all of a sudden uh, finds himself in the middle of an acrid nest. And you have to kind of fight your way out of that and then make your way to the base. There aren't any direct connections per se. Uh, however, we've got a lot of um, uh, things that really tie into the history uh, of the Lost Planet world because this is a prequel and does play, uh, take place before the first game. Um, we're touching on a lot of the things like, you know, how did Nevik become evil and, you know, uh, who are the Snow Pirates and why are they there? Uh, basically, things that were already established by the time of the first game were sort of going in and explaining a lot of that stuff. Uh, and then you'll also see um, connections between characters and events uh, that happen here um, that then inform uh, the games uh, that are to follow. Um, the reason we went for the prequel is, uh, is, is pretty simple. First of all, we knew we wanted to go back to the ice and snow planet. Um, this was something that people really associate with the franchise. It was something that really, we really wanted to do again. So one of our key words internally was return to extreme conditions, going back to all of that. Uh, another thing uh, is that the, um, uh, the guy who made the first two games uh, in Japan, uh, uh, Kenji Ogoro, really felt strongly that he wanted to um, do a lot more with uh, exploration and, and looking at colonization and sort of how the initial colonists were able to establish an outpost and, and things like that. So it really gives us this sort of frontier feel um, that we felt went uh, hand in hand with that theme uh, in the prequel. Uh, and then finally, uh, uh, once again, it gives us a chance to explore a lot of the backstory in the game that we haven't seen before. Do you think it's slightly confusing that the game has a three at the end of it then, if it's a prequel? Oh, uh, yeah, people, 
Yeah, people will be fine, I'm sure. <laughs> um, the, the other thing is that you don't have to have uh, any uh, uh, prior knowledge, right? I mean, even though it is a three, um, we didn't want to intimidate people by making sure that they knew exactly what happened in all the other games. Because this is the first chronolo uh, chronologically, you can just jump in and start playing right away.